and we'll share this recording with anyone who isn't available for the meeting tonight so that they can um, kind of see what we were talking about. Um, my name is Casey Markle. Hello, Jenny. Um, my name is Casey Markle um, from the Allegheny Land Trust. Been with them for a few years. Um, I do land acquisition work and some of the um, water quality projects that we're doing. And I have a focus in the Big Swigley Creek watershed. Um, I'm joined today by Christy Mauer, who will is from CEC and um, will be assisting and leading up, leading this project with us today. So, Christy, if you could get the, do you have the presentation? Sure, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Right, can everybody see that? Yep. So today, um, this evening, we're going to go over um, the structure of the meeting will be um, a little bit of an introduction about who we are, um, why we're looking to do a restoration project in Big Swickley Creek, what a project could look like, and then we'll have kind of an open discussion for everyone who has any questions, um, just an informal Q&A. And the, goals, the goal of this meeting also is for landowners um, to kind of understand a little bit more uh, who we are and um, what we would like to do and how you as landowners can be involved in this project. So a little bit about who, what, who Allegheny Land Trust is. Um, we're a nationally accredited nonprofit organization. Um, we are, uh, help, are dedicated to helping local people save local land. Um, our service area is primarily Allegheny County, but we do work in Beaver, Butler, um, Beaver and Butler counties as well. And um, our mission is to um, respond to rapidly disappearing green space in those, um, those areas. We currently have 3,700 acres protected in over 42 municipalities. And we're composed of four sort of areas, our land conservation team, which goes to um, acquire properties, stewardship team that manages those properties after we own them or have an easement on them. Um, we have a community conservation um, department that focuses on inner city projects. And then we also have a nature-based education um, department, which brings the community to um, our properties to learn a little bit more about what we do and also um, just learn about environmental stuff. Next slide, please. Um, this is our mission statement. Um, our mission is to conserve and care for, for local land and for the health and well being of our current and future generations. We envision a resilient region with abundant green space that is easily accessible and recognized as essential to the quality of life for all. That goes beyond um, acquiring and protecting land. Um, so we also branch out and do uh, restoration projects like we'll talk about today. So a little bit about Big Swickley Creek. Um, the Big Swickley Creek is a creek that runs through the Big Swickley Creek watershed. Um, the watershed is approximately 30 square miles. Um, it covers 12 municipalities and three different counties. Um, that's Allegheny, Beaver, and Butler counties. And there's five sub watersheds um, that are composed uh, within the major watershed. Um, the Big Swigler Creek watershed has a myriad of um, really great features to it. Um, a lot of people love to um, you know, explore the creek, fish, um, you know, explore nature. It's just a prime recreation opportunity for everyone. Um, there's also a lot of ecology that's really unique and special to this area. Um, you can see in the top right picture, uh, Southern red-bellied dace. Um, this is a minnow that's threatened in Pennsylvania. Um, that minnow has been found in this watershed and in the creek. 
And then below that is a picture of the heron rookery that's also located um, in the watershed. Um, the watershed also has some important stormwater management properties. Um, as you may have seen earlier this, this spring, um, the watershed is prone to flooding. And so it's really important that we protect these resources that help to um, absorb and manage the stormwater. Um, the the uh, watershed also has very important residential and commercial um, values as well. And that's kind of why we're all here today is to talk a little bit about, you know, um, you as neighbors and, and landowners in the watershed, um, it's important to to have land that's um, that's thriving, and um, so we're going to talk about that today. There's some major threats to the watershed. Um, so a water withdrawal can definitely impact the flow of the water. Um, development upstream, especially, can have um, some some negative impacts on the quality of the water by um, pushing sediment loads downstream. Um, and it can also damage the uh, the riparian or the sides of the stream. And flooding and drought are also very big issues as we've seen um, this spring, like I said, uh, lots of flooding. And the summer, sometimes the creek runs dry. So um, kind of looking at how those impacts um, affect the land is uh, really key in understanding the watershed. Next slide. Yeah. Um, so our work in the watershed, um, in 2020, we completed a big Swigley Creek um, watershed ri rivers conservation and stewardship plan. Um, that was kind of a multiple discipline approach that we took to understanding the watershed. Um, there were some public surveys, fish surveys and sampling, um, some research and outreach that we did. Um, and basically what that plan did was recommended some some next steps for us in the watershed to make sure that it's it's healthy and and um, and in in good condition for everyone. Um, and one of those recommendations was a stream mitigation project, which we'll talk about today. Um, we also had the Big Swickley Creek Watershed Association, which is fantastic. Um, I want to plug them right now. Um, they meet every month um, and they are a great way for you as people in the community to um, make yourself heard and be involved in the in the watershed. A link to the plan is on our website, um, alleghenylandtrust.org. Next slide, please. And I'm gonna pass it off now to Christy, who's gonna um, introduce herself and a little bit about what CEC does. All right. Thanks, Casey. Um, I'm going to turn my video on for a minute while I introduce myself, and then I'll turn it off so you don't have to look at the side of my face as I'm trying to present this. Um, so I have myself here, obviously, as well as Inga Pearson. Um, she's my project manager that works with me on pretty much every project that I work on, but specifically our stream restoration projects. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about myself, um, I think I may have met some landowners out there that may be on the call here as I was out there last year. Um, so happy to see you again, Rick. It looks like you're on. Um, give you a little bit of introduction. So I am in Civil and Environmental Consultants Corporate Office in Pittsburgh. I run the Stream Restoration Subpractice Group within the company. Um, we have about five different practices all the practices do different things. Um, my group specifically focuses on the ecology of stuff and specifically stream and wetland restoration. Um, so I am a graduate of Clarion University up in Pennsylvania, not far north from the Big Swickley watershed area. Um, got a master's in biology and applied ecology. I'm a certified ecological restoration practitioner. If you were wondering what a SERP is, um, that's one of the new certifications that is offered through the Society of Ecological Restoration now. Um, for us biologists and ecologists that technically aren't professional engineers, but we still design streams and wetlands. Um, so it's a really cool uh, program for us. Um, so no offense to engineers, but I think what we do is a little cooler. So. 
<laughs> um, certified fisheries professional through American Fisheries Society, have about 24 years of experience now, pretty much working all over the country. Um, Rosgan certified. So if nobody has heard of Dave Rosgan, he's a um, doctorate of hydrology over in Colorado, and he was one of the first people to really kind of understand what streams are, that there's different stream types out there, and really designed a methodology on how that we how to fix them and make them more into stable systems. Um, and obviously, I extremely love fishing, fell in love with fly fishing. Um, that's how I really got connected with the Big Swickley Watershed Association and Casey, um, just venturing up that way, honestly, because it stuck with trout and started trout fishing and stumbled across the Big Swickley Creek Brewery and uh, met the owner over there. And that's really how we all connected. So I am happy to be here as just a um, community member, um, not even a consultant, but happy to just help support and do whatever we can to help the watershed here. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, talk about CEC a little bit, turn my video off for you. Um, I also wanted to let you know there is a chat box here on the Zoom link. So if anybody has questions, um, Inga is going to monitor those. Feel free to throw in questions in the chat box and she'll stop, try to answer those either concurrently or we'll leave about five or 10 minutes at the end of the presentation to answer those. Um, so for CEC itself, we're about a 14, 1500 person company. Uh, we have offices across the country. Several of them do have ecological practices within those offices. Um, so we have done mitigation banks, mitigation projects, and Lufi projects. Um, those are all just different types of mitigation projects from a regulatory standpoint. Um, we've done them all over the country. Um, so when you look at our total, we have over a million linear footage of stream that we restored across the country and over 1,500 acres of wetland that we've restored. Um, and we've expanded our footprint as far west as Colorado, um, as far south down to Texas. Um, and then we also have a couple projects up in Wisconsin, which I think is our most northern projects. But to zoom in on PA, um, we obviously do a lot of work in PA. We have several offices in PA. That's our home where we're based. Um, let's focus on the Big Swickley Creek watershed. Um, so you guys obviously are familiar with this area. This is where you live. This is what you know. This is your backyard, your community. Um, as Casey said, the Watershed Association is doing an excellent job at collecting a lot of data with ALT, Allegheny Land Trust support. Um, and helping to run all that. So they have different monitoring stations that you could see all through this map that you could go in their website and look at some of that data if you're interested, but it pretty much covers the entire watershed. So if we look at the watershed as a whole, um, within the watershed plan that Casey mentioned, they did an excellent job at starting to prioritize areas of where we think there's needs, where there's impairments within the watershed and some of those things that we can really focus on. Um, and that's all these boxes within yellow, um, these yellow squares, and then the orange circles are all places that they identified where we could use some stream improvements or stream restoration projects to really help increase ecological functions out there. Um, I watched most of the watershed as well and noticed some of the same thing. So some really good data that we have here so far to really get us started. So what are the problems? Um, we know there's some problems. The watershed plan identified some problems. So what I really want to do is I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to have a lot of words on the slides. I really just kind of want to go through some pictures. Um, so like I said, I watched most of the watershed already, and I just wanted to kind of review some of the things that I saw out there and some things that I think that we could really kind of focus on for some small projects or even some larger projects. But Obviously, bank erosion is one of the biggest concerns that we're seeing out there. Um, you could see from these slides a lot of the reasons for this. There's no riparian zone, so there's no tree roots holding in these banks, which allows it to erode faster because you don't have that root support. Um, that stream has now down cut down, so we're losing floodplain capacity because of that. But we are having pounds and pounds of sediment come off these banks and run downstream, which increases the amount of uh, nitrates and phosphorus that could affect the water quality of the stream. 
Um, so we're seeing this as a pretty constant trend the whole way through the watershed. Um, no matter where I walk, there was definitely places. And a lot of that is just due to some normal constraints. Um, so you can see here, here's some old utilities, some old abandoned pipelines that are now exposed that um, that stream has now eroded around them. Um, you have large wooded debris falling, which causes some additional erosion, um, just general land use. Um, these are easy fixes, though. Um, we don't need to do a full-blown restoration project, but what we're looking for is landowners that are interested in fixing these type of issues so that we can save your land. Um, that's our goal is to try to save the land for you as landowners, but then also try to help our watershed at the same time. Additional uh, problems that we're seeing is sediment deposition. That results from a lot of the erosion. So a lot of this deposition that we're seeing comes from the stream banks. And then what happens is the stream starts to migrate laterally back and forth. When it gets too wide like this, the stream starts to lose energy and it starts to lose power that it doesn't have the energy to transport all the sediment downstream. So what happens is you start to see that sediment fall out in places that we don't want to see it fall out. So now you got these braids, which are really shallow type of areas, not really good for fish habitat, not good for bugs. Um, the stream should really be kind of, you know, probably half the width of what it is now. Those are some of the type of things that we do with natural channel design is trying to get a stable shape to that stream. We want a stable width and a stable depth. Right now, this is not stable because it can't transport that sediment downstream. Some of the reasons, again, why we see sediment deposition is because large woody debris. The large weed debris comes from some of the erosion. So we're having erosion, which knocks down some of those trees. Um, these trees fall down. That causes a lot more deposition. It causes water backup. We start to see channel braiding. That's where you could have issues on your property because the water can't bypass these areas and will start to migrate up on your property. Um, so these are things that we'd like to fix. We want to open those channels up, but still have a nice stable width to facilitate and push that sediment downstream as well have stable stream banks. Um, so these are things that we could fix. And what we also try to do in these restoration approaches is reuse all this material. So just because there's wood down doesn't mean we can't work it in and put it in stable areas to protect your stream banks and to really get good fish habitat in there so that you still have a good valuable resource in your backyard. Um, some things that we're seeing where it doesn't have erosion, you know, the banks are stable, the banks are fine, and the stream looks excellent. But what we don't have here is pools, fish like pools. <laughs> so fish like to hang out in deeper water when it gets really hot, they need those deeper pools to be able to have colder temperatures. Um, so this, these are two really good pictures that really show that we just have these really long runs, these really long shallow areas 